I love the game Aristea. It's a great MOBA style board game that has an easy to learn, hard to master design. Every game is unique and it doesn't take as long as a full war game. I think it makes for a great spectator game as well, as all the rules are thematic and seeing strategic actions play out on the board are a joy to witness. The only thing that holds this game back from an observer's perspective is knowing which Aristo is on which team. With this in mind, I wanted to make a cheap and fast solution to this so anyone watching a game could instantly identify which Aristos were on which team. This meant making coloured bases for the characters. You might think that's easy as you can just paint the base the colour of the team. But just like in MOBAs, any character can be picked for a team. So no model is fixed to one side. They all need to be identified for one team or the other. In Aristea there are two teams, orange and green in the vanilla game, and red and blue are also added into the multiplayer expansion Primetime. So I came up with what I think is a pretty neat solution to this problem. First, I got a magnet sheet from a local 100 yen store and some cheap art paper. Using a hexagonal token from the game stuck down with a bit of putty, I scored the edge on a piece of the magnet sheet and traced it onto the paper. On another piece of magnet sheet, I scored around an Aristea model's base. I then carefully cut these magnet sheet shapes out. Magnet sheets have a removable cover to reveal an adhesive. The circular magnet is stuck straight onto the bottom of the base of the model. I cut out the paper hexagon and stuck this directly to the magnetic hexagon. And voila! I have made a removable hexagonal base for the model. All I needed to do now was paint the hexagonal base the colour of one of the teams and it was done. Nice and easy and now my games of Aristea are even more enjoyable and easy to understand for anyone watching. Just need to wait for this pandemic to be over so I can actually play somebody. As a bonus, these magnetic bases can be used for transporting or displaying your models. I got these 100 yen display cases and stuck some super magnets to the bottom and now I can carry my models without fear of damaging them. Okay, so you made it through the tutorial and you're still hanging around. I have something special to show you. I've not uploaded a video for a while and it may seem that I'm not too busy, but in reality I've been working on a special video. You see, the basing idea was not just for my regular games of Aristea, but also for a battle report video of Aristea. I'm currently editing the last couple of rounds and hope to have it finished soon, but for now I want to share with you a sneak peek of the video. I hope you enjoy it. Round 1 is ready to begin with Aristos on both teams ready to make a break for early scoring opportunities at the centre objective. First activations are from 8-Ball and Maximus. As 8-Ball has the initiative, the orange team lets the green team go first. Maximus makes his way to the objective using all his action points to reach the edge. 8-Ball does the same but as he's a little nimbler, he manages to hold the centre of the scoring zone. Next we see Wild Bill and Pavati activate, and again Orange Team forces the hand of Green and makes them go first. Pavati takes up a position of cover and fires her submachine guns at 8 ball, using the tactic Focus to add one more yellow die. Pavati uses one of the specials she rolled to increase her initiative and causes two points of damage, but she also takes a point of damage in retaliation. Wild Bill moves up to fire on Pavati knowing that Maximus is too tough to crack. Pavati has cover but Wild Bill uses the tactic Focus to add a yellow dice. However, his only successful attack roll is cancelled by Pavati's critical block. Again, the orange team have initiative and force the hand of green to activate first. Hexa moves up towards the scoring zone and fails to evade Retro 8 Ball out of the zone. She makes two more attempts and pushes him out of the scoring area, leaving only Maximus as the sole objective holder. Mushashi begins the turn by playing Take a Breath to draw two tactics cards. A poor deployment and Wild Bill blocking the most direct path, he uses all his action points to get himself to the center of the scoring zone, now contesting it with Maximus. The final activation had the green team play the tactic Field Analysis to finally take advantage and force Garter to act first. Garter sped herself up the field to hold the scoring zone with Mushashi. As Major Luna activated, it became clear there was a terrible positioning for the green team. Pavati blocked an approach from the right and a trio of characters had made a wall on the left. This gave her one target, 8-Ball. It would cost the team two points, but could disadvantage the opponent for the following round. Taking a position of cover allowed for an extra orange die in her attack and it helped her score just enough hits to send 8-Ball straight to the infirmary. 
This ended the first round and the orange team were awarded two points. But with one man down at the start of the second round and the green team choosing the next scoring zone, it's going to be an uphill battle to hold the lead. 8-Ball moves to the bench and receives the minus 2 energy state. The green team receives two tactics cards, one for the round ending and another for getting a frag. The orange team also picks up two tactics for the round ending and for scoring. The green team are the underdogs as they have failed to score yet and are trailing two points. This gives them the chance to choose this round's scoring zone and they are picking zone 5. It has the easiest access for their own Aristos and it's going to be hard for Orange to contend with it. With smart plays and a bit of luck, the green team has a chance to dominate the scoring zone for 3 points. 